Hi, hello, welcome to another episode of Isaiah's New Stand. It's your host, Isaiah Edwards. The date is July 2nd, 2022. And uh, how am I doing? How am I looking? Uh, doing good. I feel like I'm looking all right. Um, let's see. So I'm starting off with a bad idiom. Oh, okay. I got the plug from a friend of the pod. And we started watching Kenobi finally. We're on the horse. I'm halfway through. And it's pretty good. It's pretty good. I will say, I do not like any of the the interactions with the Skywalker kids. Like, anytime you've seen them so far, I'm very like, ugh, this is annoying. Like, I understand why. I understand this is all tied back to, you know, Star Wars lore. You gotta make the kids grow up a certain kind of way. So it just looks right. And it blends in when you're looking at the whole tapestry. I get it. So that's... It's fine. I can take it. But there's just certain episodes that I'm kind of like, oh, this is annoying. And it's like moving the plot away I didn't like. And we could have gotten here a different way. But good. It's good. And I'll tell you why it's so good. Because of Vader. And that feels good having him back. It's cool having the interaction between him and Obi-Wan. It feels very like Revenge of the Sith, like 0.5. So loving that so far. The gush is real. Gush is good. Um, we can get into some news though, because I haven't eaten anything rad besides some donuts. Uh, they were all right. Daylight donuts is pretty good. Uh, let's see. Let's start with uh, article I got from Bloomberg. I got in there for free, no paywall somehow. It's a miracle. But Credit Susie hit with historic money laundering conv- conviction. These guys can't stay out of the news. I- I'm, I'm, you know, I, I like looking for a little fraud. I like looking for a little crime, especially with finance. You know, it's cute for me. I'm like, oh, what's going on here? What's going on in the rug, pool, whatever. So Credit Suisse, I'm never going to say it right. Who cares? Sorry. Um, it's, it's cocaine this time. <laughs> cocaine and cash. Uh, I guess essentially there was like some money muling. Um... There was coke involved. Uh, people were hit with some sentences, and that's more or less what this article is covering. Uh, the woman who was responsible, I believe her name is only like because of like how uh, Swedish regulation crime stuff works. They only like list the, the letter of the person's name, which is E. So they don't give like full information, anything like that. But she was given a 20 month suspended prison sentence, and then Credit Suisse faces a fine of 2 million Swiss francs, which is $2.1 million, and was also hit with a claim of 19 million francs, equivalent with the amount the bank uh, allowed to be laundered. And they are also appealing this currently. We'll see how that goes. But yeah, I mean, apparently it's this convoluted thing. If you can get access to the article, it is a very interesting read. Yet again, Credit Suisse does not disappoint. Uh, Bulgarians are involved. <laughs> so, I mean, yeah, it's a lot of intrigue, in my opinion. Um, let's see. Is there anything else I wanted to kind of harvest from here? Uh, th- I don't really like the defense that was used for E. They more or less say, like, oh, well, the, the, the person who was doing this whole thing wasn't given enough training. They didn't have the background for it. And it's like, what? Like, it's embezzling. So, like... I'm I'm kind of assuming that they get some kind of cut out of this. Maybe maybe I'm wrong. This is me speculating. This wasn't in the article. I haven't done much research outside of this. But yeah, it just seems like that's kind of a floppy defense for that specific person. I mean, obviously, I do think the bank is at fault here. Uh, a lot of like shady things have kind of gone on through this agency, and it's it's kind of less and less of a coincidence the more stories you hear, in my opinion. So, well, I just wanted to talk about it, get it out there. Um, in some other news, in the U.S., there was a big migrant incident that was really bad, really caught a lot of headlines. I got this from the Texas Tribune, and which I will say, I mean, this is just me and my opinion. I obviously appreciate any and all journalism, especially journalism that I can come, I can read it and say, okay, I've learned something. I've gained something. I do trash some more than others. Uh, uh, an article source like the Texas Tribune is fine. I just, I feel like every news I do grab has a certain kind of slant one way or the other. And you can kind of see it the more you read. I mean, this is kind of known stuff, but I, I just do like to say this because it's not something like, I'm like, oh yeah, I, I, I stand this and I like the way they've delivered this. I think when you get into it and read it, I do feel like there's a little bit of a slant to kind of make it about 
uh, other things. And I mean, hey, at the end of the day, we are having this conversation. This is an event and there are bad actors involved. Uh, so I just wanted to preface that before we get into the guts. But U.S. charges driver and three others in death deaths of 53 migrants found in tractor trailer. So this was a really just bad incident. There was um, a migrant smuggling situation. These people were in a the semi tractor trailer, and there was like no AC. There's no bottles of water. There's nothing. So when they go to open it up, they just see all these people in here, and they're just like just bodies of people and they said that like these people were like hot to the touch uh they were able to get um 16 people like i when i heard the number it was like 46 i believe 45 46 and they were able to get 16 people to the hospital and then a day or so later the death tolls rose um also there i think there's some discre- discrepancy that they discussed into the article about like the number let's see they do have the driver uh, one of the people who was charged and arrest, arrested and charged, uh, Homero Zamorano Jr., who was 45 years old. Let's see. If you go down further, too, I believe they have other people who were charged. If I can find it. Um, let's see. Yeah, federal prosecutors have also charged three other men in connection with the crime. Christian Martinez, 28, who was arrested on Tuesday in Palestine, uh, Texas. In, in East Texas, and two Mexican citizens, Juan Claudio de Luna Mendez, 23, and Juan Francisco de Luna Bilbao, Bilbao uh, 48, and they were detained on Monday in San Antonio. So, not good. And already, like, Abbott really took the conversation, and he made it about, like, the open border policy that like the Biden administration has is like kind of like the reason this happened. The, that was more or less how it was kind of worded and and presented. I, I do believe and understand like, hey, you can pass the buck here and say that this is Biden's fault. But to me, the way I look at it, it's because like Biden is very moderate and hasn't done anything to alleviate any problems at the border. If anything, he's gotten more people, you know, on these these issues the way that they've kind of made it less about building a fucking useless wall and more about actually using the technology at hand and using more surveillance to apprehend and get migrants uh i think a problem that we're kind of gonna allude to at the end of this podcast is the remain in mexico thing that's also made things more of a problem and less of a solution and needs to just be kind of taken out it needs to be worked on. There needs to be something better because it's just not doing it for any side of this conversation, whether you're pro uh, better migration policies or whether you're an isolationist and you say, no, we should just keep them out. Keep them out. They're illegal. Let them. I don't know. I don't know what to say. I'm, I'm tired. <laughs> I'm tired of having those conversations with these people here. With them. I just tune it out. But essentially, I do feel like it's Biden's fault that, like, you haven't come up with any kind of solution. Your administration has not come up with any kind of way to make this easier, to make this process easier. Because if you're if you're in the situation of, man, I can make it to the States, there's a chance I can do it. I'm in poverty where I live. It's terrible. I would like to come to this land of opportunity. And then you try to make that opportunity happen. And there's literally just obstacles and obstacles to get there besides money besides like the ta- all the stuff that all the the legal requirements and red tape bullshit that it takes to get into america is hard it's not easy and people who want to say just get in the right way they don't do any of the research to find out everything you fucking have to do and <laughs> the average american could not get into america if they had to actually come in the right way and i find that as a cruel kind of irony all this kind of shit it's really stupid but um i do think that's mine if if if, if, if there was anything i could to, to do to say i think that would be the best thing is to come up with a policy that helps people come to this country and gives them an opportunity that they've been dreaming of because once the people get here they want to work they want to do things but I mean, in Texas, the logic is no. We need to keep them out. We need to full court press. We need to stop the smugglers. 
and, and, and don't get me wrong, these guys didn't do their job well. They did a terrible job. And there should be more means if you're going to do this kind of work to make sure that people aren't dying. It's just flat out. So obviously these people are bad actors. Like these people are not good people in this conversation. I'm not trying to say that. As the article does go into some of these guys' backgrounds, like the, the people who are apprehended, uh, they also do talk about others who were involved. Uh, or not others, I'm sorry, but there's like a... This is pretty unprecedented in terms of the number, but this has happened before in terms of like, you know, a trailer that was filled with like people and they just did not make it. And, you know, that's definitely on this, the people who are smuggling them through, who were supposed to do this job of getting these people here. Um, so, yeah, that's all in this article from the Texas Tribune. I did want to talk about it because it was a big piece of news. Another Texas <clears throat> related thing. Got this from the AP slash Yahoo News. Uh, it is an update, and we will get into a Texas woman accused in cyclist death arrested in Costa Rica. So, this is a update from the murder of Anna Maria Wilson, also goes by Mo. Uh, she was a cyclist. Uh, she had a uh, like on again, off again boyfriend guy. I mean, we're not, you know, obviously from the, from what we have read from the Daily Mail and talked about, it was like a love triangle between Armstrong and then the other guy. Gosh, I'm kind of glad I forgot his name. <laughs> but Armstrong, who is the perpetrator of the murder, um, she was apprehended. They got her in Costa Rica. I believe she had like some falsified papers and that was how she was able to get out of the country. So that was a little spicy twist. I did not expect for her to have even gotten out of the state. So I was like, wow, Costa Rica? What the fuck? But they caught her. And uh, I, for one, am happy because, like, obviously murder is bad. Uh, especially over a man. <laughs> like, <clears throat> I, I mean, shit. I, as a man, I know we ain't shit. <laughs> like, I know we're trash. Like, and this guy especially, he was not up to any good. So... He was not worth it, sweetie. <laughs> like, sorry. Um, yeah, it, it it's a shame that this happened to to Mo to Anna Mariah Wilson. Um, hopefully, you know, after you know everything is going to come through trial and everything. Hopefully, you know, justice will be served. Obviously, that we know that doesn't bring anybody back, but it it is good that there is like you know a period to the sentence. So. You know, obviously, we'll keep you updated with any trial info I find, but, you know, wanted to keep you updated. Uh, speaking of updates, uh, pretty much the rest of this uh, podcast is going to be about SCOTUS shit. Uh, haven't really done too much about the abortion since this, the rest of this isn't that, uh, but I'm sure there will be more down the pipeline. I will say something that I find good to see. Um, it's a tangent, but the... Um, the amount of fighting that is coming from the cities, from governors, I like that. I like that a lot. Not just with the abortion stuff, but with the gun stuff in New York. Seeing people like, you know, our government agencies at least trying to do something is good. Because right now the Biden administration, from what I've seen, is literally just shrugging. Like, oh, what do you want us to do? Oh, sorry, you should vote harder. You should donate some fucking money. Like, what? What? Like... And, and that is something where it's, like, definitely, you know, once again, we're going to get into some of the SCOTUS shit. It's a shame that even when, like, we were at our best, which was, quote-unquote, like, the Obama era, like, I felt like everything was supposed to line up, but nothing happened. And then we see where we are now, and it's like, well, the Republicans sure shit got done, got shit done, like, and this is why they're benefiting now. Like, all that change we were supposed to have, and here we are. So, once again, I understand why, you know, leftists are big mad and, you know, it does kind of come around where it's like I do have to kind of look at myself back then and understand, yeah, I was a little jaded. I was a little bit, like, hyper-optimistic because, hey, wow, a non-white guy is finally not president. We really did some shit. But really, we didn't. Like, here we are yet again and shit's just worse. But, um, wow, okay, back on track. Uh, an update. Judge Ketanji Brown Jackson makes history as Supreme Court's first black woman justice. So got this from USA Today. Essentially just an update that the transition has officially begun. It's happened. Breyer will be stepping down. Brown will be stepping in. Her staff will be coming in. 
I do believe, though, in an upcoming, like, Harvard case that is covered in this article, she will have to, like, uh, recuse herself because she was on, like, a Harvard board or whatever. So that's cool that she's, like, you know, being on the level, sticking to the, the script. That's cool. Um, you know, it'd be cool if, like, someone like Brett Kavanaugh would, like, recuse himself from things since, you know, obviously he does not know how to respect women. But that's a whole other thing, and I'm just being nasty. But, um... Obviously, in terms of number, this doesn't change anything. It's still a 6-3, like, turbo majority f- majority for, like, conservatives. None of these motherfuckers really be playing by the rules. They're supposed to be non-biased. That's a big psych, um, as we've seen in this, in, you know, in June from all the rulings and stuff. But, um, you know, hey, I count it as, as good news. I know I was just talking about Obama, and yet again, this is kind of a palatable version just in the Supreme Court. But... You take whatever dub you can get in these kind of shitty ass situations. You feel me? At least that's the way I look at it. But um, we can get into some Scottish shit. A couple things I want to talk about. Uh, I mean, there's a lot, and honestly, I'm gonna level with you as a as a dummy, as a <laughs> as a big old noodle head. I don't really know how to tackle some of these conversations and issues. I just kind of do my best. So prefacing that now. But got this from CNN Politics. How the Supreme Court ruling will gut the EPA's ability to fight climate crisis. So this is a, another hand-down ruling. I know that, once again, just talking about the Obama-era administration, they came out with like a Clean Care Act bill that was supposed to empower the EPA to stop fossil fuel like generators from doing as much. And that was supposed to help regulate and do things for climate. Now, the Biden administration was banking on this, I think, very hard. Uh, it was a lot of their tough talk and when we were doing all this fucking Euro-stepping, talking about all this stuff we're going to do for blah, blah, blah. I forget what the name of the organization is. John Kerry was leading it. Whatever. But it just, not like he's doing anything. Um, but essentially, the Supreme Court said, nah, that's not how this works. Uh, they really wanted to say, no, you don't have this sweeping control. Essentially, it was like a thing that, once again, in the Obama era, they were able to dig up and say, hey, this allows the EPA a lot more sway than we're giving them. So let's give them that power. And the Supreme Court said, no, that's not how this works. You have to really break that shit down and get into the specifics to say who has this and who has what. You can't just come into a state and tell them, no, you can't do coal. Um, naturally that's not going to help with emissions though. That's only going to make our fucking problem worse. We're supposed to be clamping down on this stuff so that, you know, the degree thing, like I think we're at 1.5 or some shit. We're supposed to be getting that down. That's only going to make it worse. Uh, yeah. So we're, yeah, we're trying to, to avoid the worst consequences. The world must limit global warming to 1.5 degrees Celsius. It's already past 1.1. Um, so the the process that we are on now, the track that we're on now, is only going to make this even worse. So hopes are low, in my opinion. I mean, the EPA is trying to come up with, you know, kind of roundabout ways to enforce some kind of policy. We'll see how that goes. Um, but yeah, it's another it's another fucking punch from the SCOTUS, more or less saying, hey, this is how we view it. This is how it should be. And as long as we're all around, that's how it's going to stay. Um, once again, you know, Kajanji Brown Jackson coming in, switching in for Briar is just a dry switch. It doesn't change the number. So it's going to keep kind of being like this. I will say a uh, quote unquote silver lining though is the last thing we're going to cover. I wanted to, I added this at the last minute. I really was like, eh, you know, is it that big? But I'm like, no, I, I figured this is another big part of what SCOTUS happened uh, in the week. So I wanted to talk about it. So let me get this break in real quick and we'll, we'll put a, you know, pearl on this piggy. Oh boy. Oh yeah. Okay. Mm, and we're back. So I was from CNN Politics. Supreme Court says Biden can end Trump era remain in Mexico immigration policy. So this surprised me. I really thought that they were going to stick to the script 
And now some of the, of the conservatives definitely did. Uh, Clarence uh, Thomas Gorshish or whatever the fuck his name is and Amy Coney Barrett. Um, they they were like, no, you know, that's right. Like, you need to keep the remaining in Mexico thing. Like, they were part of the dissent. But Kavanaugh and John Roberts, who is also, from what I've kind of learned, he was one of the quote-unquote more moderates, but then obviously as the changes were happening when like Trump got like three picks, the whole mood dynamic changed. And all of a sudden he's like the last guy. (coughs) (coughs) Ooh, classic. There it is. That was a big one. I can taste the donut. Um, but he was kind of like the classic, like, Hey, no, like I'm the last guy on the cliff now. And now it kind of comes to him to be the sway and if he does, then guess what? Like, there's big egg on your face for not sticking to the quote-unquote script. Even though there's not supposed to be a script for these guys. If there was a script, then they would have term limits or something, right? Mm, but whatever. I don't know. The Supreme Court's annoying and, I guess, complicated. But, essentially, there was a 5 one majority. Kavanaugh is apparently... And, and I don't know. Like, I, I wonder if things like this are kind of a show where it's like, hey, this is literally, like, small enough ball that I can just throw you the bone. So, you know, they, but there was a 5-4 essentially saying, hey, this isn't working. Like, this just isn't work, and you need to make a change here. Like, it needs to be revisited and reworked, or there needs to be a new law. At least that's kind of what I'm gleaning from this. I mean, you guys can obviously read it and tell me, hey, you're a dumb, dumb head. You didn't read it right. Probably true. I don't fucking know. I'm just a man. But I'm doing my best. Okay? Alright? But I did think this was interesting. I will call it, I guess, once again, another quote-unquote dub. It's something. I worry, though, that whatever law that gets like that comes up out of this that isn't the Remain in Mexico thing isn't going to fix anything, isn't going to change anything. Especially with Biden. Because, I mean, yeah, like I'm going to call him a moderate. I'm going to call him a fucking, like you know, noodle, nothing, nobody when it comes to actually making any real change. He's definitely not progressive. But even if he was, who's to say that what he would like put out would even work? Because once again, let's actually reference the Obama shit. If you have all of these numbers, quote unquote, and you can't actually codify something like abortion rights, then what the fuck is Biden going to do? He has less numbers. And even then, you know, you have at least two to like nine motherfucking people who are like huh, actually i don't want to change anything i just want to get fucking paid dog like they don't care they don't care they're just playing fucking politics just to do whatever it takes to get some more money in their bank or whatever the fuck get some extra dinners i don't fucking know what makes these guys tick <laughs> like but it, it sure is not actually helping us out but here we are that's the end of the episode Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to do another third episode or a leftovers. We'll see how I'm feeling, what the vibe is like. But um, thank you for tuning in. I love you guys. I hope your holiday weekend is cool and great. I mean, obviously, I get it if you're not celebrating, especially with just everything going down lately. It doesn't really feel like you actually have rights. It's, it's a reminder of, like, how actually free and independent you are, huh? But, you know, hey, I know I'm going to eat some fucking food. I'm sorry. I mean, I won't shoot a firework if that makes you feel any better. But, I mean, I'm going to eat a burger. I have to eat burger. For independence or not. <laughs> but, for real, though, I hope you have a good one. I love you. I hope I see you soon for some more good news. And, uh... That's all I got. Bye-bye. Mwah.